Excellent. We are live on Facebook and on the internet just in general. Excellent. Very good. Today I want to talk to you about common red flags in relationships. And um, I have some notes here that I'll be referencing. And uh, oops, I'm on the wrong one. Let's see. I'll find my right one here. Go through all these. Uh, all right. I somehow got on the wrong one. There we go. Let's get to the right one first. You saw a little preview, sneak preview there of all of my different red flags. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, you know, we need to really watch out for red flags because, you know, when you're meeting people, uh, meeting new people, uh, you're looking for things. You're wanting to try to vet them. You're wanting to maybe check some references, maybe talk with other people. But, you know, people lie. And so, uh, sometimes red flags when people are talking about themselves and you kind of see their uh, their character and uh, we talked a lot about in past episodes about character of a dominance and character of submissives but this is really when you're looking for red flags as you begin to uh, as you you're vetting people you definitely want to look for red flags but then as you begin to maybe play together or scene together or you begin to be around each other or begin to be in a relationship, you want to look for certain red flags to that relationship because, um, you know, you can, uh, you, part of BDSM, uh, the biggest part is giving consent and you can withhold consent and, or, or you always have the means to um, walk away from any situation or walk away from a relationship. So if you're finding red flags in a relationship, you you, it may not be a healthy relationship. It may not be something that you can fix. You can't always fix someone. Uh, sometimes people are kind of set in stone. Uh, you know, people really have to somewhat fix themselves. Uh, you know, I like to say that I am responsible for me. I'm not responsible for everyone else. So let's look at that first red flag right here on the screen. Uh, right there. Uh, isolate. I'll come in. If someone tries to isolate you, they try to limit your access to others in your life. They try to uh, draw you away from friends, family, draw you away from the BDSM community. Uh, hopefully you're meeting partners at BDSM munches or at events that are, um, you know, that where there's people in your community are involved. Hopefully you're not meeting people just face to face, one on one. That is highly dangerous. I don't recommend it. Uh, uh, it, you know, meeting people for the first time should be in public and it's best to do around other people who are familiar with BDSM and familiar with different kinds of kinks and fetishes. Um, that way, you know, if someone's bullshitting you or not, because really sometimes people use, uh, titles like daddy or dom or submissive or slay. They use those types of things, but they don't have an understanding necessarily of what those roles entail. And sometimes they're using those things because they're just, uh, you know, they're trying to um, role play, trying to make themselves seem more interesting. Um, sometimes people will have an interest in BDSM, but they don't have any relative, any experience in the lifestyle or experience playing. And sometimes they won't tell you that they'll come off as uh, knowing more than what they really know. And so if anyone tries to isolate you, it's a big red flag. If they forbid contact with others or they undermine already established relationships or activities that you're involved with, um, if they're negative or unsupportive of your other established relationships, if you're polyamorous, if they, if they won't, um, uh, see if they uh, are really negative towards those other ones or they're unsupportive, it may be a red flag. Um, there may be an issue between partners and that's totally understandable. Um, a lot of people try to do what they call kitchen table polyamory, where they try to bring all their partners together. And yeah, that takes a lot of skill and it, it can be very problematic. I tend to do my polyamory more parallel where I have relationships going, but they don't, I don't really bring them together a lot. Uh, I like my, my relationships separate and um, that's just the kind of way that I found is easiest. Um, it just, you know, it respects the boundaries and the privacy of both of my partners. They both get 
all of me when I am with them or in contact with them or talking with them. They all get, they get all of me at that point. And I'm not splitting myself up between them. And so um, if they monitor your communications, if they're, you know, reading your emails, checking your phone calls and chats, that could be a red flag. They're trying to, uh, uh, if they're, especially if they're looking for things to use against you to pull you away from relationships or to pull you to themselves only. Uh, they may want you to quit your job or give up your car or your telephone or they may want to control your finances. Those are all things that can be negotiated. Those can be disciplined things in a in a DS, a dom sub relationship. Um, you know those, are, those, but those things are negotiated. Um, this is somebody who wants to uh, do those things really upfront. Um, if you're in a uh, a master slave relationship, those are consensual, negotiated. They have contracts all those different things, and you talk about all of these things beforehand, this is someone who you are new in a relationship with or uh, someone who's just trying to get you to quit your job or give up your car, your telephone, wanting to control all of your money and stuff. You know, it could be a red flag. It's not, those are not normal, uh, dominant, submissive uh, things. Not, those are things you work into after a long period of time, perhaps. Uh, getting mixing finances and things. You don't do that really up front. Um, if they monitor your activities, they demand to know where you've been and who you've been with, um, often in a way that they're accusing you of something. And so, um, in our, again, in a dom-sub relationship, uh, there can be different types of check-ins. Uh, you know, a lot of times my submissive will tell me when she's going somewhere, I'm going to the store, I'm going to this. I'm not trying to like uh, she just wants me to be have an awareness of of where she is and what's going on in her life. It's not that I'm uh, having to monitor all those things. She can certainly go wherever she wants to go without my knowledge uh, or my you know without m my awareness. Uh, but you know it's just a good thing. But that's something that um, you know if it's talked about, if it's something that they offer up for themselves, uh, that this is somebody wanting to monitor and control. Um, they habitually call or visit unexpectedly. Uh, you know, there's uh, sometimes that can be a red flag if they're just showing up to try to surprise you, to see what you're doing, see what you're up to. Uh, if they refuse to allow you a safe call, this is the number one one. Uh, run, run, run. Get away. If you're on a first date or a first meet together or on a second or third even, if you try to make a safe call and they stop you from making a safe call, if they won't, if they won't make, let you make any calls or any contact with someone, get out now. That is a dangerous person. Um, they may not be inherently violent or whatnot, but they're a dangerous person because they don't know what they're doing. Uh, they are already, that is a big safety red flag. And I would just distance myself from that person and... Uh, and, and once you're away, then you can ask and talk about uh, the importance of safe calls because they may not know what it is. They may think it's an etiquette issue, you using your phone during a date or whatnot. So it may be just something like that, but they just, you know, they just don't know that safe calls are important, important, important. Can't stress that enough. We don't want you to be dead, but we want you to be alive. We want you to have a good, healthy relationship. And safe calls are really important. If they become angry, if you question them or show signs of independence or strength, um, a part of a DS relationship is empowering our submissives. It's not to um, control them. They should have a certain amount of independence, a certain amount of strength. Um, they, they give over certain aspects of their authority. Uh, an MS relationship is a total authority exchange, but that, again, it comes after negotiations and there may be some limits and there may be some areas of independence. There may be some areas of, of, of uh, strength or whatnot. And so that first one, isolate, that's a really important one. Let's go to our next one here. Deceptive. Uh, if the person is deceptive, if they, are they reluctant to give you personal and factual information about themselves. Now, they're not going to give you, you're not asking for their social security number. You may not even, they may not, you may not even give your phone number right away in a relationship. You may use a kick or 
or a Snapchat or something like that. You may not give your Facebook identity information away right away. You know, there are some some certain things, but when they talk about themselves, they should, if they went to college, they should have really went, if they say they went to college, they should have really went to college. It should be factual information. They should be able to tell you what their real age is. Uh, they shouldn't be, you know, I'm 29 and counting. Now, you, you should be able to say what your real age is. Um, you know, you, you should give, you know, some personal information about your history or you know, you shouldn't say that your parents are dead if they're not dead. Th different things like that. If they refuse to give their marital status when when asked before a first meeting, you should really know whether someone is married, whether they're polyamorous, you know, all of those different kinds of things. You should know whether they're single. Uh, a marital status is really important because that shows, um, because that somebody is tied to or in covenant with someone else. And that can affect your relationship and you should really be able to consent whether or not you want to be involved in someone who is married or still married. You may, they may be separated. They may have been apart for a while, um, but you sh still should know if someone has any kind of links to someone else. And so that's really important. They shouldn't be deceptive in that area. That's a huge red flag. Um, do they give inconsistent or conflicting information or details about themselves or past events. They should really be a consistent person. Uh, things should not conflict. Things should add up. And you should definitely, it's a red flag, but it doesn't necessarily mean run away. It means you should ask and see why does it sound like this doesn't match up with that. You're really trying to make sure that this person isn't just making up stories. Um, uh, has very limited times or places or methods where you're able to contact them and gets angry if you try to make contact, contact outside of these conditions. A lot of times cheaters will have, you know, I'm only available between this time and that time and they'll blame their kids or their grandkids. They'll blame someone else. So you really just want to be cautious. You want to ask, you know, what's going on? Why? Why do you have these limited, you know, they'll say I'm at work all day or that I got to work late. And then, or there's times when they won't, you know, you can't text me, you can't call me during these times. It doesn't mean that they, you don't, they're, they're necessarily going to answer, but you should be able to send a text at any time to anybody that you're going to be involved with. It doesn't mean they have to read the text. It doesn't mean they have to they open the text, but you should be able to send it at any time. A, a big red flag is cheaters won't want any won't want you to show up on their phone when they're around one of their partners, one of their other partners that they haven't made aware, haven't told anybody about. So you should be able to contact at any time. Uh, does not give you their home or work phone numbers at the appropriate time. Um, those different things, you don't want to give them away right away because if someone is toxic, if someone is dangerous, you don't want them having your home phone number. You don't want them to call up breathing at, in midnight every night, you know, or call up and, and harass you if, if a date doesn't go well. So you don't want to give those things necessarily away right away, but at an appropriate time. When you're starting to play and scene together more exclusively, you'll want to have their phone number. You'll want to be able to call and talk because voice is really important. You may want to be able to FaceTime or something like that. Um, has multiple online identities for interacting within the same communities. Now, I have some different ones. I've, I've, I have Primal Piggy and Magic Daddy, and those, those are different kinds of brands. They're not really my different identities. I'm more consistent overall. So it's not that somebody has different brands that they market themselves online under, but this is somebody who has multiple identities. They're Sexy Boy 69 and Master Dom 25, all in the same community, both of them on FetLife. And, you know, why do they have these, these different online identities and uh, that they're interacting with different people on? Um, you know, that's just a red flag. That's something to really talk about. And why do you have these different ones? Sometimes somebody will have an old one or a new one. And a lot of times it's not, you know, you don't use your real name on some of these uh, FetLife or uh, maybe even Facebook or some of your online social media, Twitter or whatnot, IG, Snapchat. You may not use your real name on there, but you should use the similar identity for all of those. You shouldn't have multiple ones within the same one. Uh, if someone cheats on you, that's a big red flag. 
That's just flat out. That's deception there. If they cheat on you, polyamory, remember, is not an excuse to cheat. Uh, polyamory is uh, being in multiple loving relationships or having the potential for multiple loving relationships, but it's not cheating. Uh, it's people are aware of who's involved. Uh, and uh, they're aware when you have an interest in someone new. Uh, they may not like it or whatever, but uh, you know you talk about it and you you make people aware. Uh, gives the impression of being very successful without ev any evidence of real success. Uh, you, they shouldn't come off as a sugar daddy or a sugar mama. Uh, they shouldn't come off as being somebody who has lots of cars and homes and all these sort of things. But, you know, they can send you pictures of them, but they don't, they show up in, in Uber and they don't have, or they don't really they have on, you know, kind of dirty clothes or whatever. This is just a red flag you want to see. You know, the, I remember the guy that owned Walmart drove an old pickup truck, had tons of money, but liked his old pickup truck. So it's definitely something, you know, it's not always that they're trying to be deceptive, but uh, sometimes they may just like, you know, like the things that they like, even though they have a lot of money. But they should be able to show some evidence for it if it's something that they're boasting about, especially, uh, or they're trying to woo you with, I'm a very successful person, business owner, but you know, you just really don't have anything to show for it. Uh, disappears from communication for days or weeks at a time without explanation. That is um, things that a cheater would do. Uh, is evasive about their activities, especially unexplained absences. If they say they're going to be somewhere and they don't show up, or they say they're going to call you and they don't show up and they do it over and over and over again, uh, these, are thing, these are red flags. These are things you need to sit down and talk about figure out what's going on and and they if they can't come up with a good explanation something that's valid not an excuse but just like this is why this is then you know it may they may be cheating you need to be able to upfront ask it this looks like cheating behavior do you have someone else uh, we'll not have normal, everyday, vanilla conversations. Just because we're kinky, just because we have fetishes, just because we may be into BDSM in some variety, we should be able to have normal, everyday, vanilla conversations as well. Um, if they won't have those, if they just want to act kinky around you and that's it, you know, it could be a red flag. Um, let's go to our next one here. And so I was re referencing my notes there. Uh, let's see, hit this right button. Odd. Odd is a good one. So if they behave oddly is what I'm talking about. If your friends warn you against the person, uh, you know, you should really just kind of think about what your, you know, your friends may be. They may, may be empaths. Uh, I know my uh, submissive is an empath and she is a gift to me. I, her empathy is, is totally a gift and I totally uh, appreciate it. And I listen to her advice, her sage wisdom. Um, but if your friends warned you against the person, um, you know, are they critical of the public BDSM community and won't participate in munches or parties? A lot of times that means that they were, may have been kicked out of the community or they may have been doing some type of predatorial behavior in the community and they were called out for it. So now they're really critical and negative about the community. Um, just because they don't want to participate in any in everything, or you know, maybe it's just something to talk about. You know, why don't you like to participate in munches or parties? Maybe it's an anxiety they have or whatnot. But you de so you definitely want to talk about it. But you know, if they're really critical and negative, and they just refuse to, just uh, you know, because they had some, you know, if they had something bad happen, uh, you need to just kind of investigate it. Maybe a red flag. Uh, what was what was it that happened? And you know, what, there's two sides of the story. Well, there's three sides of the story. There's you know my side, their side, and then there's the truth. And you want to try to come to the truth as best as you can. One moment here. <coughs> Are they critical of the many respected members of the BDSM community? And have they had interpersonal conflicts with other? Uh, uh, you know, people that are respected or more in leadership uh, 
of the community. I know a lot of times we host, we've hosted munches in the past and we've had to ask some people not to come and ask some people not to, you know, or uh, ban some people from our events. And um, they were, you know, they're critical and they had a lot of conflicts with us and we just were not uh, uh, comfortable having them involved because we just, we didn't think that they were gonna, they, we thought they were gonna be uh, a lot of drama towards other people involved and we didn't want to um, have that in in the scene uh, has no apparent BDSM references or friends that you can talk to and becomes angry changes the topic answers questions with questions ends the conversation when you ask personal questions or ask for references that's a kind of a big paragraph there but if they don't if they haven't played with anyone else or don't have any other friends that you can talk to you know, it's a red flag. Um, people, when, you know, we don't just sit in a room and masturbate ourselves all day. We oftentimes play and have other relationships with other people uh, in the past. And if all of those relationships ended terribly, so much so to where you can't even, or even as a play person or a play partner or somebody in a BDSM, you know, uh, somebody they met at a munch, or if they just don't have anyone, if they're totally alone, that's a huge red flag. Why did all the things go so bad? Uh, it's definitely something you want to talk about. Um, if they visit, you know, that looks like they're hiding something, and they may be hiding something. They may be hiding a um, a bad behavior of their own, and so it's just kind of odd. If you know, they may give you names of friends, but you can't verify that they even exist, or you suspect that they made the names up. And so if they say, my submissive was this person, and you go looking it up and can't find anyone by that screen name or that name, you know, has bad or no relationship with their biological family, this is potentially a red flag. It could be odd. It doesn't, you know, some people's biological families are toxic. Sometimes the biological family disowns them because of uh, gender or sexuality or, uh, you know, or BDSM involvement. And so it's not necessarily a, a, a red flag all on its own. It's just something you need to discuss, something you need to talk about. Why, you know, why? Why is your, you know, don't you have a relationship with your biological family? And, uh, uh, you know, as they begin to speak, you'll be able to see whether or not it's legitimate or whether it's, you know, something that may be a, a problem with the person you're trying to uh, trying to date or be in a partnership with. And so definitely something to look at. Let's uh, look at my next one here. Uh, insecure. Um, so, you know, they often if they often exaggerate. That's a big deal. Uh, if they deflect the blame to others for things going wrong and they resort to extreme measures to prove that they themselves are not at fault, if they don't take personal responsibility when things go bad and, and they won't acknowledge their own mistakes, um, if, they, if their apologies don't feel sincere, if they're phony or their, their, their apologies themselves are somewhat insulting, if they put you down in front of others if they're constantly comparing themselves to others, these are all insecure behaviors. If they brag excessively about their experiences or their mastery or their level of training, that's a huge red flag. Um, there should be a certain amount of humility to you know what you know. Um, just even as an educator in BDSM, I don't go around just you know oh I just know everything. I can often actively listen to someone speak about the most simplest thing, and I can glean something from them. And you know I can be thankful. Oh wow, I never even thought of it that way, or I didn't see it from that angle. And wow, that's that's legitimate. That's valid. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with me. You know, it's not like you know I. I remember somebody said, yeah, we, uh, I, sus I, I do rope suspension and I leave them that way for three, for days at a time. Well, that's, you know, that, that's bragging uh, about some, you know, trying to show their mastery or their experience. And that actually what it shows is that they don't know anything about suspension and they don't know how, if they do doing it, they're not doing it safely. They're doing it very dangerously is you don't suspend for days at a time. You don't leave someone sleeping in a suspension. You lose circulation. You could, um, you know, it, it can just be very dangerous. 
Um, they engage in scene name dropping. If they always, oh, I know this person. Oh, I read that book. I know these things. If they just excessively name drop all these different kinds of things, that could be a red flag. It shows an insecurity with themselves. It's like, you know, uh, it's tr almost saying like, I'm not enough on my own. I have to have all of these other things involved. And like, you know, bragging about experiences is the same way. It's like, I'm not enough, just me as a person. I, I'm only I'm only good for the things that I know how to do well, you know. And so they avoid discussing what your possible future relationship could be like. They try to keep you in the dark about what may, may happen next in the relationship. Huge red flag there. Uh, seems not to reveal their emotional side. Hides their vulnerabilities or behaves in, in an emotion, emotionless manner. They could be a sociopath. And so you, they should be able to show some types of emotions <laughs> in some way or another. They might not be an over, a, a very expressive person, but they should have, be able to show some, man, some emotions. They should have something that they care about. Something that they're passionate about. Uh, hides behind their DS authority. Demands that their authority not be questioned. Huge, huge, huge red flag. Especially at the beginning. Somebody should totally be able to at least question you. Ask you, hey, what is the, how do you do the safety on this? Um, this doesn't sound right. Is this right? Are you sure? Can we look it up together? Can we make sure? You know, that sort of thing. And so you don't want somebody who's insecure. You want somebody who can, um, you know, be confident in who they are. They are enough all by themselves. They don't need a bunch of extra, a bunch of extra. And so disrespect. <coughs> Sorry, my throat gets a little dry when I talk a bunch. Uh, if they don't respect your feelings, your rights, or your opinions, red flag. If they're rude, uh, to public servers such as waitresses, cashiers, or janitors, you know, if they're if they're demeaning to other people, that is a huge red flag. It means that the person's an asshole. You can be dominant without being an asshole. You can, you know, you shouldn't be an ass to everybody around you. That just shows a bad character trait right there, and that's a huge red flag. That means that they may not respect you. If they don't respect other people, they may not respect you. It's definitely something to look, look at, something to talk about. Um, displays little concern or awareness of the feelings or needs of others. They uh, never or seldom say thank you, excuse me, or I'm sorry to anyone. If they don't, um, I don't expect my submissive to uh, be in protocol to me if I can't have a protocol of gratitude towards them. Um, you know, if if I'm not thankful for their service or thankful for their gift of submission to me, if I don't even see it as a gift, if I see it as a requirement, then that's a, that would be a red flag on my character. And so that's definitely a red flag when people don't show gratitude or etiquette out in everyday life. It's definitely something to talk about. Remember, these red flags aren't necessarily run. Some of them are. If they don't let you do a safe call, you want to run first and then talk later. And on some of these, you may want to do that. And when I say run, you just want to say, no, this, this meeting is over with. We have things to talk about. We'll do it on the phone. We'll do it on chat. We'll do it somewhere else. But we're not going to do it here in person. Uh, you know, sometimes those things, I don't feel safe and, you know, it just, we'll talk about it and see if, if, if I can come to a place where I feel safe again. Um, they exhibit obvious and excessive displays of impatience. Uh, if they believe that, that they deserve some particular reward or benefit at the expense of others. These are disrespectful behaviors. These are character issues that are that are coming out. And a lot of, you know, this is really about being disrespectful to other people because they may woo, they're trying to woo you. So they're going to show you respect, but it, you know, it may not, it may not add up. Uh, they, there may be, they may be putting on a, a ruse and they're, you know, towards you. And then some of this is going to come out once they feel more comfortable. And so that's something you're looking for. That's what makes it a red flag. Let's go to our next one here. Manipulate. So do they try to make you feel guilty for not being good enough? Uh, do they say that you're not a true sub, slave, dom, dame? 
Do they belittle your ideas? Do they blame you for their own hurt feelings and anger outbursts? Do they outbursts? Do they blame you for all the relationship problems? Do they yell or threaten to withdraw their love or leave you when you don't do as they wish? These are manipulative behaviors. I went through those kind of fast. Uh, the one I want to get back to just a little bit is belittling your ideas. Uh, they definitely shouldn't. Um, uh, they definitely should accept what you have to say as valid. They shouldn't see. They shouldn't think that everything that they have is greater than anything that you could offer. That's a huge red flag. And uh, you know they shouldn't um, question whether you're a true sub slave or a dom. Uh, you, they they shouldn't. Uh, as you're getting to know somebody, if they're doing that, they're saying. You know, you're a true sub or it would do this and this thing. If that, you know, um, you know, there are uh, endless varieties. And so, you know, uh, definitely just something to talk about. What, why do you keep saying that I'm not a true submissive or, or you're in a dominant position role and you're like, why do you keep saying I'm not a true dom? And then you can talk about it's a red flag. That they're just coming up to this conclusion, just you know, you gotta, you need to talk about and see why they feel that way. Okay, let's go to the next one here. I'm trying not to make this video super long, but these are really important. It's always really important to look at these different red flags, uh, inconsistent. So, um, do they not keep their word and do they break promises? They, that's a red flag. You should. When someone tells you they're going to do things, they should do it. They shouldn't always have an excuse. They shouldn't always, they shouldn't excessively break uh, their word towards you. And so they shouldn't make a bunch of promises that they can't keep. It's a red flag. It's something to look forward to. It may show a level of immaturity. It may show a level of narcissism of uh, extreme selfishness, extreme selfishness and self-centeredness. And, you know, maybe something that you need to look into. They may not be ready yet for a partnership. They may just be consumed with themselves. Um, it makes plans with you and then makes excuses for changing those plans. Um, that a lot of times that can be a sign of cheating. And so that's something you need to look for. Because uh, if someone's cheating on someone else with you is what I'm getting at, they may make plans with you and then the other person wants to do something or questions them so they break their plans or they change the plans with you. And so it's just something you want to look at. Treats you lovingly and respect respectfully one day and then harshly and accusing the next day. Um, so you want somebody who's stable. You want someone on both ends. If you're a submissive, you want a stable submissive. Uh, there may be some things that you need to do, some goals in your relationship that you need to work towards of uh, being more consistent. Um, but, you know, you want someone who's uh, somewhat stable. Um, uh, I know somebody said the crazy ones are the fun ones. Someone told me that recently. I said, you know, not for a partnership, not for a relationship, Maybe for a one night stand, that may be something, but in a long term committed uh, DS power exchange dynamic, consistency and stability is something that you, you, know, you need to know that they're going to be able to, to do the, the relationship. Uh, do they go through extreme highs, like behaving with great kindness and then pronounced lows, behaving with cruelty? Almost as though they're two distinctively, distinctively different people. Just something to think about. Um, there may be some mental health issues uh, behind that. Is this something you need to talk about? Is there you know, medication that you need to be on that you're not taking? Is there, you know, is there therapy that you need to be going to that you're not going to? You know, is, um, relationships are not therapeutic in and of themselves. Um, we're not meant to be, uh, as a dominant to a submissive, we're not meant to be that person's therapist, uh, not exclusively. There's a certain amount of therapy that we can do just in like behavior modification types of areas, but it, you know, they need to have someone professionally that they can talk to and it doesn't, it would be a conflict of interest 
if I was a therapist and, and my submissive was in need of therapy and came to me, it would be a conflict of interest. It would be unethical to do that. And so they need to have someone they, they can be talking to. And the next one here, this is a good, this is a really important one. And it may look uh, domineering. You can be dominant without being domineering and domineering is they pressure you is that root that peer pressureness. They pressure you into doing things that you don't want to do. Red flag, red flag, red flag does not respect your limits, negotiations, or contracts. Huge, 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 huge red flag. They're, what they're doing is if they're domineering, they're, uh, they're going against your consent. They're not validating your consent. They're being non-consensual, which is the hallmark of BDSM. They push you too quickly into a, a poly relationship, or a DS or an MS relationship, you should not be submitting within a week. You should not be trying to dominate or be a dominant of somebody within a week. <laughs> you shouldn't. <clears throat> you shouldn't be dating for a, a couple weeks or a month, and then they want to add another poly relationship to the mix. There is a certain amount of time. They should be patient with that. They shouldn't be trying to add additional poly relationships, uh, you know, back to back to back. Relationships take time to grow and they take an investment and the, somebody shouldn't be trying to over invest themselves into different relationships. A huge red flag. They push you into a sexual relationship too fast. All BDSM is not sexual. Uh, BDSM is, is about, uh, a lot of it is mental. Some of it is physical but it's not always sexual. And, and it, if it ever is sexual, it needs to be consensual between both the, uh, the person who's more of a top and the person who's more of a bottom, whether they're a top and bottom in a scene or whether they are, um, whether they're a dominant and submissive type. And so sex should always, always, always be consensual and it should not be pushed. It should not be expected. Uh, you can do BDSM scenes without sex. You, you can, you, so you don't have to. There are certain aspects of, domi of domination and submissiveness that you can do without being sexual. So if you're not comfortable being sexual with someone, they shouldn't say that, well, that's just part of the scene. You can do a scene another way. Uh, overly demanding of your time must be the center of your attention. Insists that, oh, this is the biggest, oh, oh, the biggest one. Insists that safe words or safe calls are not necessary. Run, run, don't scene, end the scene, end the date, end it and go away in, you know, get, get away and then talk about it because it may be something like, uh, like I said, that may be an etiquette issue. They don't want you using your phone because they feel like you're being rude using your phone during a meeting. They just don't understand what a safe call is. Uh, during a scene, they don't understand what safe words are about. They, they need some training. They need, they need to be educated, <laughs> you know, uh, Get away, get out of the scene. Don't try to educate in the middle of a scene. If they don't know what safe words or safe calls are, huge red flag. If they say that they're not, if they know what they are, say they're not necessary, say they're not allowed, don't play with that person. Don't be in a relationship with that person. That person is a toxic person. And if they're just refusing that part, then they're, they, do, they have no place within BDSM. Uh, even in a master-slave relationship, safe words are are sometimes not in not necessary in those types of things. But there is a contract, and so a safe word or a contract uh, there is a, there is a working through of a process a working through of a process where you know what the limits and boundaries you know what's expected you know what's allowed. All of those things are already worked on in advance, and you, and you, uh, so that is a highly specialized thing. But someone who's walking up to you off the street and says, "I'm master so and so, and you're going to be my slave," you don't get a safe word. Run. Not a good person to talk uh, to. Do. They don't know what they're talking about. They're full of shit, <laughs> and so. <laughs> 
that's just as, as frank as I can be. Uh, what's my next one here? Excessive. And so excessive, they're, they, um, they spend large amounts of money or they, they spend inappropriately on luxury items. Um, you know, they shouldn't be giving you huge gifts right away. Um, you're not really, they shouldn't be spending huge amounts of money on you right up front. Um, that, that, you know, that shows that they may see you as property more than a person. They may see you as an experience more than a person. So it's definitely a red flag, something to think about. Like, why are you doing this? You know, why are you, um, why are you, you know, if you have all of this money, why are you spending it so much on me right away? Why are we doing all this luxury stuff? You know, what's going on? Just something to talk about. It may be a red flag. It may be just something, you know, maybe that person's not good with money and that should be a character issue. Something, even if they have a lot of money, they may not be good with it. They may end up not paying their bills or something like that because they're spending it on you. Uh, they may be somewhat obsessed or uh, maybe a, obsessive. So they're excessive at least. Uh, abuses alcohol or other drugs. There's a certain amount of use that, um, uh, you know, a, according to where you live and, and what we're talking about, you know, as far as alcohol or drugs, but uh, abuse is using those things excessively it, to a point where you're not comfortable. If they're, if they know you're not comfortable and they're still using or they, to, to an excessive uh, point, that's definitely a red flag. If you are feeling uncomfortable and you express your uncomfortability and they just have to use, they just have to, they have to have just one too many drinks. Oh, I just have to have three. I have to have it. If it's just, I have to have it. It's just definitely something you want to talk about because you want to be comfortable in the relationship. You don't want, you know, you don't want somebody who's always highly intoxicated. It's difficult with intoxication to give consent. Uh, you have to give it before the intoxication and and uh, then, you know, then there's a certain gray area there of whether or not that you can still give consent while you're intoxicated. And so definitely something that you definitely want to have a long conversation about and see where both of y'all are comfortable with that. Um, gambles excessively. Uh, that, that's just a red flag. Constantly ask for money or material goods from you or others. Always trying to borrow money, trying to get money from you right up front is a huge red flag. That person may not even be a real person. They may be trying to scam you. They may be trying to defraud you. you de they may be using BDSM, trying to get monetary gain. You know, really, honestly, if if the their level of BDSM, there's, you know, there's a certain amount of sex work and, and those types of things that uh, come in contact with BDSM in a lot of ways. But if their whole point in contacting you is to get you to subscribe to their OnlyFans, that's a red flag. Um, you know, you can ha certainly have an OnlyFans and, and that can be a form of making money for a person. And, you know, that's totally up to them. But, you know, they, it's a red flag if their um, their submission to you is based on whether or not you subscribe to their website. <laughs> and so uh, it, the same thing with a, dom a dominant. If they're wanting you to, uh, if they'll, they're saying, I'll hold your key for chastity, but it'll cost you $100. Yeah, it's a red flag. It's something you need to really look at. You know, are you know, are they a pro dom? Is is this more of a therapeutic thing that we're going that we're, uh, you know, or is this just a scam? Is this somebody just trying to take my money and my key and not gonna follow through? It's just something you want. It's a red flag. Uh, if money is involved or material goods are involved up front, it it's a red flag. It may not be the relationship you're looking for, and you definitely don't want to, you shouldn't have to pay to play necessarily right off the bat. It's definitely something to consider. Um, if they fall in love with you way too fast or they swear undying love before they even meet you, that is an excessive, obsessive red flag. It's definitely something you need to, you need to look at. And if they say things like, I can't live without you, or do what you want with me. I don't have any limits. Those are red flags. Those are to saying that those people uh, have little to no experience in BDSM. 
if they don't have any limits. If they don't know what their limits are, they haven't tried very many things. And so you definitely, it's a red flag. You want to definitely look into it. Uh, if they deliberately say or do things that result in getting themselves hurt, uh, if they leave, if they are always jumping out of airplanes and always bungee jumping, and just, they just live this excessively adventurous lifestyle, could be a red flag for you. Just something you need to talk about. Why do you do these things? Why, why you know, why do you put yourself at such huge risks? If they put themselves at risks, is what it's, what I'm saying. They're putting themselves at all those risks. What kind of risks are they going to take with you when you're doing something that requires safety? And so what kind of safety do they put in place when they take these risks? And what kind of risks are they going to take for you? And so definitely something to consider. Definitely a possible red flag. Um, let's go to the next one here. Uh, abusive. Now, this is a big one here. Do they lose control of their emotions in arguments? Do they raise their voice, yell, call you names, blame you for things that they did? Do they use force or violence to solve their problems? Do they punch walls or throw things when they're upset? Do they turn on their peers, quickly going from best friend to arch enemy for trivial or imagined reasons? Do they speak badly of others, particularly people who they were good friends with? Do they display uh, negative re reaction to being told no, like a really bad reaction? Uh, do they hold excessive grudges against others that go great lengths? Uh, and do they try to get revenge on people? Do they threaten suicide or other forms of self-harm? Are they hypersensitive and easily upset by annoyances that are part of everyday life? Um, those are things that uh, are all red flags that this person may be an abusive person. Uh, if they threaten suicide a lot, that's a huge red flag. Uh, that that means that the, the, your relationship is going to be, um, and if they have a lot of self harm, uh, that means your relationship is going to be, you know, unstable. And so that can put that can be, um, you know, if they're abusive to themselves, can you trust that they won't be abusive towards you? If they're threatening to kill themselves or other forms of self-harm to themselves, can you trust that they're not going to hurt you in a bad way? <coughs> Something in this realm you always you also want to look at uh, about abuse is, uh, were they victims of abuse? Uh, their abuse may be a learned behavior. It may be something that, um, you know, a lot of times hurts and wounds will give hurts and wounds. And so that's uh, definitely something. Do they ex exhibit cruel behavior towards animals? If they're killing animals, they may be a serial killer. Just something, a red flag. Um, I'm not talking about somebody who's the, you know, the seasonal hunter or the, um, you know, someone who fishes, uh, you know, and those kinds of things. I'm talking about someone who's like torturing animals and they're, you know, or something like that. Uh, sends you pictures of torturing animals. Um, if they admitted to hitting a partner in the pl in the past, but claims that the partner made them do it, and I'm talking about hitting them like in a in a bad way. I'm not talking about like impact play. I'm talking about hitting as far as like punching, um, knocking somebody out, that sort of thing. Um, if they're if they're into torturing someone, but in in an extreme way, you definitely want to. It could be a red flag. You, um, you, with BDSM, there are certain aspects of sadomasochism in there. And if someone is the extreme sadist or the extreme masochist, doesn't mean that you jump into those things right away. You work your way into more extreme scenes. You don't do the extreme scene right off the bat. And so that, you know, th those things could be an abusive person. We don't want you dead. We don't want you to get killed. We don't want you to get maimed, or we don't want you to get uh, 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 into bondage uh, or kidnapped non-consensually. We want you to, you know, we want you to be safe. I want you to be safe. And so, uh, and all these different kinds of abuse are huge red flags. Definitely something, if it's abuse oriented, definitely something you want to get away from. You don't, and then talk about 
after the fact. Why are you doing these things? What are these things? Maybe get a third party, if it has to do with involved, get a third party non-bias, um, maybe even a professional involved and to ask, to mediate, to be like, why, what are these things? What's going on? You know, why are you doing these things? What, what are these things stem from? So abuse, definitely a red flag and you definitely want to take it uh, very seriously. Um, and my last one here is brainwash, breaking, mindfuck, hypnotism. These things are uh, mental related things and you definitely, they, they're not in and of themselves necessarily uh, all a red flag like, but you definitely want to look for these different types of keywords. These are people that are wanting to do something to your mind. Uh, one you, in BDSM, we we typically have a certain amount of behavioral modification that um, we work towards. We have goals, and we work towards those goals. We may have punishments. We may have rewards. There may be a certain amount of discipline involved in the dynamic. But uh, if someone's trying to brainwash you, if someone wants you to break them or wants to break you down uh, or wants to be broken down, those are that's a red flag. Something you need to talk about. If they're wanting, if they're big into mind fucks, and they want to really mess with your mind. Um, definitely, just something to be cautious about. You want to make sure the person has lots of experience. Also, with hypnotism, if they're wanting to mess with your mind, if they're wanting to uh, knock you out or hypnotize you or do any of those types of things, you definitely want to uh, take those things cautiously. It's a red flag because you want to be cautious. Um, you know, somebody who's talking about these different types of, tra using these types of things in training, they're, you know, they, you want to be sure that you are only opening up your mind towards people who are safe. You always want to make sure that they understand consent and all of those kinds of things. So red flags are, uh, let me go back here. I can get the definition good here. Red flags are behavioral warning signs that something is not quite right. And uh, now while these warning flags apply equally to everyone, you have a statistic, a statistically greater chance of finding someone in the BDSM world, finding some of these red flags because, you know, of the kinds of things we do to amuse ourselves, the kind of things we are interested in and involved in, uh, like impact play, uh, dominance mission, we can, you know, people can be rough. And so uh, sometimes predators hide more easily in the BDSM world because they're abusive, because they are, um, you know, they like to, you know, uh, somebody is wanting to be submissive, so they're wanting to, to take advantage of that. They're wanting someone to dominate them. And so it's definitely something to think about. Um, red flags, uh, just like I said, when you see a red flag, it doesn't automatically mean no to the relationship or no to playing with the person. When you see a red flag, a lot of times it means let's step away and let when we'll come back together on you know through a t text or a phone call, most likely a phone call, or we'll come together with someone else there in public and we'll talk about what these things are that are uh, that I'm seeing as unusual behaviors and what kind of these red flags are. And so, anyways, uh, I am Primal Piggy. Uh, I hope this was a good discussion for you about you know selecting partners. Uh, about playing with others and being involved in the scene and looking at the different red flags that are involved. You can find me on Facebook at The Primal Piggy, on Twitch at The Primal Piggy. You can find me on YouTube. You can search Primal Piggy and I should show up. Um, and so I, I'm on some of the different uh, things. I'm ex um, more exclusively beginning to post more onto Facebook because my dynamic is definitely an adult dynamic. As you see, the there's a parental advisory of course. All BDSM, all these things that I'm talking about are uh, are adult oriented. They're not for minors, and they're all nonviolent, consensual BDSM. Uh, you should always be risk aware and have consent for your kink. And so, thank you very much for watching this live video. Uh, I just really appreciate you. Uh, taking the time today to really look at these things. It was very important 
that you know what the red flags are and that you, uh, uh, you do lots of communication about them because we want you to be safe. We want you to be sane. We want you to be consent. We want it to be consensual. Everything that you're involved with in this scene. All right. Have a good day. Thank you.